My name is Brady Jolly. This is the Meet the Team podcast, and I'm talking to my good buddy and our HVAC manager, Russell Thomas. So thanks uh, thanks for chatting today, man. Pumped to have you on here. You're welcome, buddy. How are you doing, Brady? Great. All good, man. Yeah, um, yeah so just want to get to get to know you a little bit today on the podcast. Yep. Um, tell us about, you know, personal life, you know, where you grew up, where you live now, family, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I'm originally from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Grew up down there. Actually, when I was born, uh, I was born in Pee Wee Valley out in Oldham County. Pee Wee Valley. Pee Wee Valley, yep. It's on the outskirts of Louisville. I didn't know that. Uh, so I grew up in Louisville, um, moved over to like St. Matthews area, and then eventually ended up in the Highlands area uh, down in Louisville. Um, right now, I'm living in the Independence area. Uh, I got three kids, so doing that. And Tell us about your kids. Uh, <clears throat> I got an eight-year-old boy, uh, Jackson. He gets kind of... He's the wild one. He gets a little crazy every now and then. I love Jackson. Man. Yeah, he's yeah he's he's entertaining. Um, and then I got Russ. He's fourteen, and then Brenda. She just turned sixteen. So I know she's itching to get her license or whatever, get that going. But just haven't had a chance uh, to get that going. But yeah, but you're in the thick of it, man. With the yeah, kids. yeah, yeah age. Yeah, it's cool. But yeah, Jackson. Uh, one little funny thing about Jackson. Uh, last weekend, uh, frequent down at North Lake a lot, and uh, we're. Got a little floating house down there, and we're sitting there, and Jackson reaches down in the water and grabs a, this turtle. So he's ho- sitting there holding a turtle, and then he's got a fishing rod out. He's fishing at the same time, and all of a sudden, the, the, I end up with holding the turtle. And Jackson, this fishing rod just, I mean, it just went zoom, and it just dove down. Big fish on there. Uh, so I'm holding the turtle. I end up throwing the turtle in the water. Jackson's over there trying to control the rod and do all this stuff, but... Ended up losing the fish, but yeah, he's he's a little firecracker. He's a wild man. Man. He, he runs around and he's just wild. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's awesome. Yep. Takes after his dad, man. I wild guess. man. I guess. So uh, tell us, Russ, how long you've been in the trades, why you got yep. into the trades, how you started in the trades, and just like your journey to get to like this point yep. working here, at Jolly. Uh, well, being from Louisville, I got um, started with uh, automated temperature controls, which is basically. I'd work with an engineer. We did um, like hospitals, uh, big commercial, uh, lots of schools down in Jefferson County, down in Louisville, uh, lots of hospitals, lots of churches, basically really large rooftop units that were all computer controlled stuff. So I worked with the engineer doing wiring diagrams and doing basically how it all kind of flows together. I did that for, I don't know how many years probably six, seven years, and eventually moved up to Northern Kentucky, got into um, residential HVAC, and uh, worked with the company, and now I'm here at Jolly. Of course, I've known you for years, you and your dad, so yep. once you all started the HVAC trade up, or the HVAC part of Jolly, it's like, I want to go there, so, because you're a great family to work for. So all in all, I've probably been doing it, I don't know, 20 years or so, 20, cool. a little over 20 years. You know, it's funny, I, I think I've shared this with you, but when uh, we started the HVAC business, yeah. you know, you called me, yep, and I thought you were calling me to tell me you were mad that we were starting an HVAC <laughs> business because we weren't right. going to be using the comp- your company yeah. anymore. Yep, and in fact, you were calling asking about if we were hiring. Like yep. that was like the that was like such a relief for me because yep. I'm like, oh man, Russell's going to be mad at me. And then you're like, man, I'd love to come work for you. It was like yep. you you hit the reverse card on me, man. It, it yeah, no, and I, I came in and talked to you, and and then. Um, I believe you ended up, but did you ask me to call your dad or your your mom and dad or? I think so. Yeah, because yeah, I, I ended up calling them. They're like, what? So yeah, yeah. but now it's been great here, at Jolly. Um, yeah, it's tell just us like a about family. it. And it's just, I mean, all the people here. It's it's it, it's a real good mix of work and and like um, balance of having fun. But when it's time to work, we get it done, get after it, and so and get it done and come right back to fun again. So. Talked about talk about when you. When you came to Jolly, mm-hmm. um, what were you doing? And then your progression here, and what's your job now, and what do you do in your job? Um, when I first came here, I was hired in as an installer, and um, I believe I was here um, maybe a few months, something like that, and then got promoted to run the HVAC department. Um, so I've just been navigating through that, um, managing the service, sales, and install department. Um, it's For a challenge. Years. Yeah, it's it's been through well over three years yeah yeah yep so um it's been a challenge at times but it's always good to have a good challenge and heck yeah and get after it and 
Yeah. yeah I mean, this thing is just, I mean, it's just growing, man. That's, it's, it's going to be really good. Yep. So excited about the team right now. The, the, uh, HVAC team, my service techs and, uh, salesmen and installers and, it's just real exciting yeah. time right now. So you've went from like working on the biggest HVAC equipment mm -hmm. you can possibly yep. work on with these huge engineered like systems right. and wiring diagrams all the way down to the residential smallest units you can put in a house. Right. You know? So um, just talk about like what is it that you like about that? What is it you like about the trades and what's attracted you to it for yeah. like your whole career? Well, I like the trades because I like helping people. I think it's good to, like, have a challenge with something, go into something, and see the outcome when you're coming out of it. Uh, for example, being on, like, no cool calls or no heat calls. Going in, the customers are, like, they're sitting there freezing or whatever, or they're burning hot, and then just seeing the smile on their face, to seeing how happy they are once you've solved their issues. And just it's just a great feeling of success to be able to help people. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Being out in the trade, so... So, yeah, so, I mean, it's just been a really good thing. So we talk about, um, you know, obviously when customers call us, they're usually mm -hmm. not in the happiest mood, right? Like right. They've, got, they've got either a plumbing issue, HVAC issue, like, right. but that's one of our core values, right? Be the name, be jolly. Mm -hmm. I think you do a really good job of that. Like, Appreciate that. You're just happy guy. Like you walk <laughs> into somebody's house or you talk to an yep. employee and they're, they're excited to talk to you yep. and get along with you very quickly. Um, but I'm curious, are customers, do customers tend to be, more agitated when their furnace is out and they're cold or when their AC's out and they're hot? When the AC's out. Typically, in the past, um, run a no heat call in the wintertime and you'll have a person answer the door and they just get wrapped up in a blanket and they're like, oh, happy to see you, happy to see you. Get them taken care of. But in the summertime, it's totally a different thing. I mean, people are agitated, they're hot, yeah. and it's like people just don't like being hot. So, yep. yeah, so it's a totally different Totally different thing. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I relate to that. I'm probably yeah. the same. Yeah. I think I'd rather be cold than, yeah. than hot probably. But So um, yeah. you've been doing this a long time. Is there any stories or any wild customer or job stories or anything like that not, that come to mind? Not really that I can think of. I know the other day there was a uh, one of the dispatchers uh, was coming into the office and the side door over here that leads like into the kitchen area came in the door like screaming. And she's like, there's a snake out there. There's a snake out there. So Alan and I ended up going out there, and we eventually found it, and it was up this up one of the pine trees up there. So we got like a pole, and eventually it dropped down. Alan grabbed it, and then he dropped it again, and it went back up the tree. I'm like, come on, man, you had it. So eventually we got the snake out of the tree or whatever, and then there's a picture floating around. I think you've seen it of me I saw sitting here it. holding this black snake in front of the kitchen door down there That's the so Pee Wee valley coming back out of I here guess. right there i used to be i used to be terrified of those things um the old house that i had was on 10 acres in california kentucky and um old farmhouse and there were snakes in the house so little baby baby snakes there's one in the kitchen sink and one in the living room one on the kitchen or one on the steps going upstairs so kind of gotten used to them over the years i used to basically run the other way but I've seen a snake in a crawl space with a customer um, on the east side of Ohio one time, so that was kind of interesting. We, we, have, we were trying to catch it, and it ended up going down into these center blocks, and we were getting ready to come out because the customer was in the crawl space with me, with me. It was a pretty decent crawl space. It wasn't real nasty and muddy, but we were getting ready to come out, and he's like, whatever you do, do not mention a snake being down there because the wife will want to burn this house down <laughs> so but yeah i've seen the snakes and critters and squirrels and birds and all kinds of different things so when you're crawling that. through a crawl space what's the last thing you want to see uh, probably like a raccoon or something i don't i've never like seen it. one of those in there now what about spiders you're fine with spiders. i'm fine with spiders yeah snakes they don't they don't really bother me all right, so yeah. you guys have to work in, like, some tight spots. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. normally basements, but, you know, crawl spaces, attics. Yep. Um, what's, what's, like, what's worse, an attic or a crawl space? An attic. Um, we did a job for uh, Ryan Adams uh, that lives way out, and uh, at his house, um, it was a system in the attic, and it was summertime, and we had to start his job at, like, I don't know, it was probably, like, 4 a.m. Like, it was early, early in the morning because you couldn't show up at normal time, 7.30, to get the job started because the temperatures are already rising and it's hot. 
So yeah, attics are the worst, um, just because of the heat. But in the summertime or wintertime, they're not as bad. But yeah, yeah, it's, it gets tough in an attic whenever it's. I mean, even 80 degrees outside, it can be over 100 or so in the attic. So it gets pretty brutal. Yeah, it gets pretty pretty hot. So. So what do you see? You know, I know we we install Daikin. Mm-hmm. Uh, we install a lot of fit systems. Yep. You've been in the industry a long time and seen it come from like you know 20 25 years ago to what it is now and the technology and like the continued technology like what's some of your favorite like tech techie up-to-date stuff that we're doing now in hvac and is there anywhere that you see that going that you're like looking forward to for the industry i mean and like the fit stuff is pretty cool i mean it's all inverter technology um and it's all variable speed stuff so that's really a really neat technology before coming to jolly i really didn't know much about the fit systems um it's kind of like a a ductless system um that's inverter but it's it's actually like a ducted system if that makes sense so it's it's new technology that i came into a jolly so i really enjoy the fit systems cool. um really efficient stuff and all that um a lot of that stuff's getting computer controlled i mean who knows where the future of this stuff's going to go yeah. Uh, it's kind of like cars and things these days. It's just getting crazy with all the just all the technology and everything. But when, I mean, the principles are the same. I mean, it'll never change on how a system works, everything like that. I guess it's just like a car. Uh, basically, the same principles or whatever. It's just all the technology and the added features and, and things like that that make it more efficient. Um, so, cool. yeah. So, Russ, what do you like about working at Jolly? What's your favorite thing? I would say the teamwork here, if the, if I ever need anything at all um, in regards to even personal life or work-related or any of that stuff, pretty much go to anybody here. And they're they're going to lend a hand. They're going to pretty much stop what they're doing and be right there for you. So, I mean, it's a, it's a great thing here, Jolly. I love it here. And uh, Cool. Yeah. So, what's I mean, your, it's... What's your favorite company event that we do? Favorite company event? Probably... I don't know the Christmas party is pretty fun, so yeah, it's yeah, no, when it the last, yeah, yeah, no, when they're at the last one, but mm-hmm. but yeah, it was it was fun. The the fourth the Jolly thing's fun too. The last yeah. year was out at AJ Jolly, and this, thing. yep, yep, I try to get the kids there, see if Jackson's gonna run around wild or something. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> funny. Any other crazy stories you can think about? Uh, there was a time down uh, the restaurant, I believe it's on Madison Kung Fu to Marasia or whatever oh, down there. Place is great. Yeah, that, that, that place is really good. Um, they were doing a renovation down there, and uh, we had some outdoor units, large five-ton outdoor units that were basically being hung on the side of the building up. Uh, they were mounted into brick, so uh, got the units up there, had the extension ladder up next to one of them going up. I can't remember if I was charging the unit or just doing something to the unit, and they were probably 12 feet up, 15 feet up. All of a sudden, one of the units just pulled out of the wall, and I'm on the extension ladder. Basically, knocked me off the extension ladder, oh and down I came. So I ended up in the parking lot, like laying there, and basically the the outdoor unit is right above me, being held by the line set, the copper line set, and it's just sitting there swinging like a couple of feet above my head, and I'm like, oh my gosh! It would have landed right on. So yeah, it would landed right on me. So I basically laid in that parking lot for I don't know. 15 minutes or so i got a scar on my back from it but yeah that was a crazy close call how much does how much did that unit weigh you think i don't they're probably only like 200 200 pounds 250 pounds but still 250 it scared pounds the, coming it, on your it head. scared the heck out of me yeah yeah and i just laid there in the parking lot like oh my gosh man that's terrifying yeah so dangerous yeah it was it was scary so that's but yeah you're making me hungry for that place now that's a really good place to eat. <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> that place is good no, good idea. Good idea, Ryan. That was a good one. Anything else? Oh, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, so, Russ, you got your master license here recently. Yes. So tell me about what that process was like. Tell me about what that means to you, why you wanted to yep. do it. Uh, well, I had my journeyman's for, uh, I don't know how many years it was, but eventually after coming here to Jolly um, – I wanted to get my master's, so you got to have a master's license to be able to pull uh, permits and uh, basically to be able to kind of not really run the company, but you got to have a master's license for the permits, liability, and all that stuff. Uh, so I got that uh, a little over a year ago. 
uh, Kentucky Masters, and then I got my Ohio contractor's license at the same time. Uh, so licensed in Kentucky and Ohio. So that was a great accomplishment for me to get that done, uh, to be able to hold those licenses for uh, Jolly, for here for the business. Um, so yeah, it's just a great thing. It's It's been... I always kind of avoided it just because I don't like taking tests, kind of like I don't like the microphone or the camera, that kind of stuff. I don't like taking tests. I'm horrible at taking tests, but uh, eventually got it done, and, and it's just, it feels good. I've got, got a few you. other licenses I'd like to get. Maybe a boiler license uh, would be a good one to go get. If um, So, yeah, so there's a few other little things out there that I'd like to eventually get, but. It's really cool. It's like the pinnacle of like you've been in this industry for so long and then you went and now you're a master. It's it's amazing, man. It means a lot to the company too. And I think you've done a good job of helping train up guys and gals Mm -hmm. in your department to to go get their journeyman license too. Yeah, we've had several. Yeah, we've had a few people uh, go take tests and stuff. So pass the test and all that. So it's cool. There's an apprentice installer right now that I'm pushing to go get get his license. He was studying the other day. So good. I think he's got. I think he said a couple of weeks he's going to go take the test. So good. Get him and license and get him out there. So, you know, we just um, we just redid our mission, vision, and values. Mm-hmm. You were a big part of that, being on the management yep. team and the leadership team. Um, what, if any, of the core values, like, stick out to you the most? I mean, the like the don't hesitate to educate and those kinds of things. It's just constantly trying to build leaders here, taking service techs, kind of like my whole career, um, even here at Jolly. It's just like, it, it's just helping others to get to that next level, to those leadership levels and just, just like being there for them, supporting them, yep. educating them. And just, it, it, it's just a really good thing. Yeah. What would you say, Russ, to somebody who, like a young person who was looking to considering getting in the mm-hmm. trades and considering HVAC? Like, you know, I think you're a great person to speak yeah. to that because it's been so good for your life and career. Right. What would you say to them to encourage them to get into the business? Um, I mean, you don't really – I think trades are, are the way it's going now. Um, I mean, trades – Lots of lots of good money to be made in the trades. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a degree to go into a trade or anything like that. It's basically just getting there working under a master um, and just just putting in the time. And it's the trade. The trades is the future, I, I believe. I mean, there's there's not a lot of trades people out there. Um, I mean, I just think it's a great field to be in. I mean, H, whether it's HVAC or plumbing or electrical, um, I know if I wasn't in HVAC, I'd probably be in electrical and then probably plumbing. I know plumbing get kind of nasty or whatever. I'm not – really don't know much about the plumbing side of it, but I guess they deal with sewers and those kinds of things. But, yeah, but yeah, I, I love the HVAC trade. I mean, it's, it's always something new that's coming along. Um, it's typically never the same thing every single day. So there's always something new and um, – it's just a good thing. Cool. Really like it. Awesome. Yeah, there was some conversation the other day in the huddle about what trades easier, plumbing or HVAC. So what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably say plumbing's easier. <laughs> <laughs> Crap runs so I don't know, man. but yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm sure if you ask Daniel, he'd probably say yep. HVAC's easier. Yep. No, so yeah. Cool. Um, that. Yeah. So – that's kind of, uh, as we wrap up, like, is there any other, anything else, like yeah. stories or anything else that you can think of? Like, And I'm sure there's one story that you're itching to bring up that, that you haven't brought up. Well, tell us about it. Well, I'm waiting for you. What do you think I'm talking about? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Uh, all probably. right. A lot, a lot of my, uh, kind of going back to my Louisville days, uh, a lot of my childhood was skateboarding. Yeah. Now you're like, hey, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of my childhood was skateboarding. I probably did it for close to like 20 years skateboard with all kinds of pros had a good buddy <laughs> well, like who hey, don't... you know, i mean tell us who you skateboarded <laughs> with but, um tony hawk was one yeah like, you know, i mean whatever. just like the yeah back in the day during like demos a friend of mine back a long time ago down in louisville had a skate shop and so good buddies with helm but helm and i and his dad were always kind of tour on the east coast and go all the way down to like florida and stuff and hit all these different skate parks so Super cool. That was a lot of my childhood, I guess you would say. Was you grew up doing skateboarding? That. You met Tony Hawk, dude. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah, that's I awesome. Guess. That's funny. 
surprised you did. I know you're rich and bring that up. Yeah, I, I still want to try to get <laughs> you on a skateboard, you man. I want to see I you. I want to see you rip it. All right, <laughs> maybe one of these days. Come do a kickflip for you. Well, Russ, seriously, man, yeah. you're uh, you're like type guy that makes jolly jolly. You know, like I can't that. imagine this place without yeah. you. Your smiling face. I hear your yeah. giggle from uh, ten offices away. Yeah, all there's day, usually every something, day. something and, going uh, on that makes me it's laugh. Like, it really makes this place special, and I just appreciate your positive attitude, willingness to dive in. Like going from your position early on, right when we started the HVAC business, yep. to being in management, diving in, learning the numbers, learning about what it meant to be a manager. Like that yep. was really hard, and you handled it very well. And I right. like just look forward to working with you for a really long time, man. So yeah, because yeah. I mean, I had the I had the technical side of it down pretty good, and obviously still do have the technical side of it. But yeah, the the numbers part of it was the the part to kind of get that took a little bit of time to get used to but man it's i mean it's not that bad now it's I'm just curious, like every like, day getting into into the numbers getting into the budgets getting into the goals um having the techs like strive to meet their goals to better the techs and all that but yeah the numbers w was the biggest thing for me um figuring out but with help from you from scott and different people around it's i mean it's just it's gotten really good I'm curious your thoughts on when you went from being in the field to into management, what you thought management was going to be like, and then if there was any misconceptions or things that were different than what you expected. Not, I mean, not really. I mean, it really wasn't much. Yep. It really wasn't much different. I mean, just having great people around, like I said with you and Scott, you all really guided me and really helped me um, just – learning it i mean i really don't know what else to say cool yeah well man i know you were a little uneasy about getting on the podcast, yeah i don't i don't so like this thing in front of me right here has it been or that thing over there so <laughs> has it been as painful as you thought or is it all right i don't know it's all right i guess all right good well, i turned you. it away i don't know how many times so <laughs> i kept ignoring the invite there. so <laughs> yep well thanks for being up here man